I'm making the crust for the two pies we're going to have. Uh, the first thing is to add flour. I use about a cup and a half for each crust. Now this is just the bottom. If you want to make a pastry top, you have to do a second batch. Okay. Now that's about a cup and a half of pastry flour. Then I take a little salt here, just a little pinch. And it's about a half cup of butter. I like to add just a little bit more to make it, uh, give it more of a buttery taste. What I did was leave this out overnight so it's room temperature and you can manipulate it almost like clay and that, that allows it to blend into the flour without melting into it. If the butter is too soft, it'll actually blend and combine with the flour and, and it won't be a flaky crust. But if it's stiff like this, uh, it'll stop blending in when it bakes and it'll make a very nice crust. Then I work this with my fingers. I have to work all of the butter into the flour. And what, what it will look like will be sort of a crumbly mixture once I'm done. This is something you really have to use your hands to do because you can feel if the uh, mixture is right, if all of the butter is actually blended. So it takes a little while to, to mix. This is the most simple thing to make, and yet in my experience of uh, eating probably thousands of pieces of pie in my life at different people's homes, uh, I've always been disappointed in their crusts. And it turns out that uh, something so simple as making a crust is, is never taken seriously. You really have to understand the nature of the materials you're using, how the flour blends with the butter, and how the temperature of the water will affect mixing what you have. In my cup here, I have some ice cubes. I found that you must have ice cold water to mix in the pastry to make it better. The idea is to get a flaky crust and a crust that is buttery without being <clears throat> too mushy. The difficulty comes when you're trying to roll this out. You don't want to crush it to death and make it stiff like a board, but then you still want to make it hold up so you can put it in the pie pan. See what's happening? This is beginning to get uh, very light. All the, the butter is sticking to the flour, but it's not actually melting into the flour. It's just sort of adhering to it. You don't want it to be a soppy mess. See how nicely that is. It's sort of falling almost like snow and we'll have in a little while. That's pretty good. Try not to get too many lumps, butter lumps, because they'll show up in your pie crust later on if you leave them there. Now, the next step is to add the water. I this have a real tablespoon and what I do is add about six of these to the mix. There's three, four. I put in maybe four and then stir it. Because what I'm looking for is uh, a way for this to congeal, to come together. Five, six. But not be too mushy. 
Now see, that's not enough. Sometimes you have to add a little more. That's why the most important thing is not the number, but it's what's, what's going on in your pot here. See, it's beginning to come together more now. Not quite enough. Well, we're going to go over what I said, but that's all right. One, and two more. You see what's starting to happen? It's starting to come together. The more I mix it up, it's beginning to blend. I think maybe one more little bit here will do it. There you go. I think that's going to be it. So what's happening is starting to form into a ball here. Very nicely. This is hardly any waste. What we have is a nice little dough ball. And the feel of doing pastries is everything. I have gloves on, but I can still feel the pastry. I don't, I don't like the, the dough to get stuck all to my hands. It has a nice feel to it, but you have to add some flour here because they're going to roll this out. I like to put lots of flour. And I'll put this down, just like that. But there's one thing I have to do before I roll it out, and this is one secret that my French grandmother taught me. She said to, to make a, a nice flaky crust, you have to blend the butter and the flour together, and instead of crushing it in the rolling pin, you do it in your hand, like this. This is a, it seems to be a cruel way to treat the pastry, but what's happening, I'm actually very gently mixing that butter and the flour together. It's just very slowly blending together. This is an old technique that my uh, grandmother grew up in Montreal, and this is a technique that probably followed back in the generations, back to the 1600s in France, in uh, Canada, I mean. Pastry was very important to the French. My grandmother said it's essential to be able to make a good crust. If you can make a decent pastry, then everything else in life will just follow suit. This is the most important thing that there is. And now what's going to happen, I, I'm feeling the ball here is changing. It's getting very soft, very uh, almost rubbery. I can I press down, and it's not cracking. It's just sort of, uh, you can see the impression of my finger there. And what that means is when I roll this out, it's going to be a nice, smooth crust. And this is still very light. Now we take our rolling pin, and we roll from the center outwards, like that. One, two, three, four. I do each edge, it's not really corners in a pie crust, but you need to keep the circle even as you roll along. Since your pie crust is round, it'll match your pie dish. Sometimes it gets a little squared off, so you have to compensate for that. And you don't want to roll this too much, because the more I press down, 
it makes a denser and denser crust and it's, it won't be flaky, it'll be very stiff. You'll notice when people compliment your pie crust, they always mention how flaky it is. There's nothing you have to crunch when you eat. It sort of melts in your mouth. And as it gets bigger, I simply round the edges here. Now it takes a little bit of practice to know how big do you make this thing? Well, um, you look at your pie dish and that looks about right. So, before I can put this in, I like to take more butter and rub it in the pie dish. I love to put butter in things. So if you're on a low-fat diet, you're in trouble here. A lot of butter in there. Makes it nice. Then we add just a little bit of flour. And this will make the crust come out very easily when you are ready to cut it. And you can see how, how nice this is. It looks almost like a pizza. So I lay this little fellow in here, just like that. And the more you get used to pastry, you can tell my, it feels very soft and light. And that's a good sign. There, it's all laid in. Now, if you do this right, you won't have any excess. Everything will be put in the pie. Now, to make the crust, the edge here, uh, it's really the showpiece. This is very important. Because the look of the pie will determine a person's appetite. If it looks beautiful, they're definitely going to have to have some. So I roll those edges under, just like that. It's just a little excess sticking over the edge of the pie dish, just a little bit. So I can roll that over. And what I'm doing here, I'm making a little mountain. See as I go along? how that looks. It looks like a sort of a ridge. And you want that ridge to be even as much as you can all the way along the dish. There. Now, there are special tools and you can use a fork to make an impression around the edge. But I do something very simple. I take my thumb, my finger, and I hold my thumb, push my finger down. Now what's happening, I'm making a lovely little edge here. This will tempt the most finicky appetite once you see such a pretty pie. Also having a high edge will help if the pie happens to rise during baking. It won't slop over the edge. You don't want, you don't want the filling to leach over the edge of the crust, it won't look right. Now for lucky, yes we are, see, it matched. So what we have here is a lovely crust for lovely pie.